Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Shadow Dolphin in the Jungle Cup because actually someone here legend with it. I'm going to show it now on the screen. I don't really want to butcher the name, so sorry if I don't want to say it, but yeah. Um, here we're going to have a legend team with it, so congrats to you. Of course, link going to be in the comment section below. But yeah, today we're going to have a little bit more of a spacier Pokemon here. Of course, the rest of the team is kind of what you would expect with the Rigoroth. But also, I feel like Manibus was really good in the beginning and like everybody was running it and then like nobody was running it anymore. More. By the way, the team that you're going to see here in the first battle looks kind of familiar to a team that I showcased yesterday and those battles were made after this, so maybe people copy it from this, maybe people just saw it on Twitter as well, who knows, but here we will be able to get a shield, which is going to be great, and because I expect that they have in the bag a Pokemon that if you saw the video yesterday, you already know, I'm going to try to keep my Donphin kind of healthy, try to go into my Amandabas, I said they're going to get the drop of my attack here, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm going to keep both shields for my Donphin. And honestly, Donphin has so much damage with Counter. Basically, Vigoroth is so overpowered in this meta because Counter has next to no resistances in this meta. And the same kind of goes for the Donphin. As we can see, it is going to be the Toxapex in the back. I can try to go for the straight Earthquake, just hoping that the opponent maybe does no shield here. But they decide to use a shield, which is fine. We can use a shield onto the Brine. We have to be a little bit careful because they're still going to have that, um, I think a Whiskash it was, in the bag. So we kind of have to see when they're going to try to swap into it. They're going to go for another Brine immediately when they get it, which does make sense. We're still going to lose quite a lot of health here and they swap out into the Whiskash. This body slam has to KO for us to win this game. It does not, but one more counter it does. And so we can now go for the Earthquake and get a big boom against the opponent here, knocking out the Toxapex easily and we can move on to the second battle. So basically, you're going to have an interesting kind of team here in general because it's not really an ABB style, it is kind of whatever you want to do. Like a lot of times you can kind of sacrifice your Donphin as well and you're going to be fine in the bag. Sometimes you kind of want to swap out into your Vigoroth eventually. There's one Pokemon which we're definitely going to see here today as well, which I feel like is very tricky for this team to deal with. but. We're going to see it when we're going to have it, but here we're going to be able to go ahead and go for a body slam against the opponent's um, Vigoroth. We're going to get a shield here as well. And so we would be able to just farm down at this point if they don't want to swap out. Here's actually the Pokemon that I was talking about. Like, it's not too bad in this scenario, but if you encounter Skarmory in the lead, it is kind of tricky because your lead does not have coverage really for this Pokemon. And now I'm kind of curious what other moves Dunfrank can learn. I think this Pokemon has quite a lot of moves. I know it learns Play Rough, but let's take a look real quick if there would be an option other than Earthquake for this Pokemon. Because I actually don't really know the moves that you could go for Trailblaze, which actually might have been a cool idea for this Pokemon here as well. Maybe they were running Trailblaze on it because this would even boost their own counter, of course, for the Skarmory matchup. It doesn't really make any difference, but you would be able to one shot any kind of Mud Boy. So Trailblaze would be a cool alternative. The player off would have been great against something like an Altera. Here the opponent tried to catch, did not really work out for them. Um, Heavy Slam it has as well, which has most likely no play in this current meta. But still, I guess, like, you have some options. Like, Play Rough, I most likely would not really go for because Earthquake is just a little bit better in general, I would say. And um, Trailblaze, I think, might be even better than Earthquake for this Pokemon. But here, we already saw, like, one um, option where the Earthquake was really great for us. But here, the opponent decides to forfeit anyway, so no need for us to hit Bubbles. And we can move on to the next opponent. Of course, we are going to be here already in Legend Elo range, so we're going to have some very good opponents as well. Obama Snow seems to be a bad matchup, of course, because they are uh, Ice type against the Ground type here, but because Counter is super effective, we actually do more damage than them and we force them to swap out. We can go for our Body Stem to try to bait basically the shield from the opponent, but it's still going to be a tough matchup. Body Stem is coming through, we can go for another one, which is going to force the shield for sure, or we're going to be able to knock them out, both of which I'm totally fine with, and I can swap out now into my own Vigoroth. I was expecting that I might be able to just farm them all the way here but maybe i should have just stayed in with my lead and just would have let go because they can actually still get to another charge move and this is going to change some stuff around as this is going to be a little bit of a trickier one we're going to see now in the back lantern lantern is pretty rough for us rock side i think still does slightly more damage than one body slam so we decided to go for that like the difference is really really small but um we can go ahead and go into our donfin and they of course go straight for their own charge move here i think this game is kind of over but we will see maybe we still have a chance here they swap out into the obama's now i can still go for another charge move we have to hope that they maybe use a shield or something which they don't and now it's down to man bus against the lantern I'm forced to try to go for a bait here first, and so I decided to go for the aerial ace, trying to get the shield from the opponent. I know that they don't have to shield, but it's more likely for me to go for the hard-hitting move, at least that's what I thought. And honestly, I think if I went for the the Dark Pulse here, not even the foul play, um, I think I would have been fine, because looking at the damage that the opponent had here, 
I feel like it would have been better for me to just go ahead and go for the Dark Pulse. This might have been exactly the damage that the Dark Pulse would have done. But it is what it is. We're sadly going to lose this game because of this good game to the opponent. And we can see what the next opponent is going to run. Skarmory in the lead. This is exactly what I kind of want to talk about. Because I feel like this is going to be a matchup which is going to be a little bit of a tough one. Unless the opponent decides to do like a lag around. Of course that's great for us. But um, here decide to catch a move might be a... Sky attack because there is no reason to go for Brave Bird against uh, Dunfan, but I guess it's okay. We can still go for a Rock Side, as Rock Side is going to do again a little bit more damage compared to the Body Sim if you only get to one charge move. But here we have to hope that this Body Sim is going to be enough to knock them out, is it? It is not because the opponent decides to use a shield, so we can go for a shield as well. We have to be a little bit careful because they're overformed by a little bit, but we can go up to basically another body slam here. And I thought I could farm them down, but now they got a one extra fast move in from before. And so I am now going to have a ton of energy on my Dawnfan, but I don't know if this is going to really come in clutch here because now I can still go for Dark Pulse here, which is going to be great. They're going to use a no shield actually. It's going to be the Obama Snow in the back, and this is going to be a tough one for us. They cannot knock me out with one charge move on the Mandibus. Mandibus is just too bulky for it, and we got a shield. So, there are two scenarios, basically. Either le let the move go through here, basically, or they knock me out prior, which they do here. And so, I should be able to just go for two body stamps. But, looking at my HP, I was like, they should be out of energy. Why not go for the troll move and just go for the Earthquake instead because it's going to be resisted and it's going to be a little bit of a flex. So just flex on the Obama Snow with your ground types and we'll move on to the next opponent. Now I guess would also be a very great time to talk a little bit about how I think this team is in general. And I have to say, it's definitely something that is worth trying out. I feel like Donphan is a lot of fun in this meta and has a lot of play. Here sadly the opponent calls the bait and also I was not able to swap out um, do the correct time here, but it's going to be okay for us. But yeah, in general, like, Dunfin had a lot of play in this meta, and I think it's going to be a great Pokemon to use, especially because it just hits so hard. Trailblaze might be a little bit better for this Pokemon, because Earthquake is a little bit difficult to get to, and Trailblaze gives you coverage against Water-type Pokemon, which might be kind of interesting for some scenarios, but in general, team was solid. I think I went a little bit positive with it. I think I went um, 9 and 6 with this team total. But um, yeah, again, it was like not the greatest team I've ever used either because it is a little bit squishy. It is a little bit of a fun one to play. But still, if someone hits Legend with this, it's most likely going to be a decent one. But here we're going to see the matchup against the opponents of Vigoroth. They're very likely going to use a shield against me as well as I decide to go for the Body Slam. I tried to swap out. It didn't work out. But I can use a shield against them now as well as I can try to swap into my Vigoroth. I'm trying to catch a move, which does not work. Oh, does actually work out because the opponent can still go for one. But we get some extra energy. We still have a move store on our Donphan. In comes now, what's Pokemon? The Cloud Zion. I can try to go for the CMP tie, which I think it is. And this is going to be great for us, because if they use a shield now, they're going to be shieldless for whatever they had there in the back, as the opponent can go for an Earthquake, most likely. Yeah, that's going to be enough to knock us out, and we have a ton of energy. It's going to be a Skarmory, and we can forfeit. Ah, so annoying. Literally the only Pokemon that I could have not really beat at this point, but it is what it is. Speaking of what it is what it is, this is going to be a very difficult matchup for us as well. Mantine is going to be a little bit tricky. I'd rather swap out here into my Vigoroth. Vigoroth can just take those hits a little bit easier than Donphan. Basically, think about Donphan as like a Vigoroth that is doing more damage, but it's going to be a little bit more squishier. So you kind of want to rather go for the shields on a Donphan because you're going to shield up more damage than if you go for a shield here on your Vigoroth. So... Yeah, we're going to be able to get a shield from the opponent and I can still try to go for a rock slide because I know they try to farm me down anyway. Rock slide does a little bit more damage. This is going to be able to put them maybe even a counter down range for me, but I decide to rather go ahead and go into my Mandibus because I don't really want to use shields yet on my Donphan. I decide to go for the full farm down here instead, which works out perfect. And let's see what's going to be in the back. It's going to be the Obama Snow. Did they catch the move here? I'm not too sure, like it kind of looked like it. They didn't, okay. So we're gonna get some damage onto them. We kind of hope that they're going to throw up very soon because all the energy might be a little bit tricky for our Donphan. But they use a shield and I can go for the body stamp. This is going to be enough to knock out the Obama Snow. I doubt it to be fair at this point. It is not, but they swap out into the Mantine. There still might be a chance of winning this game. It's going to be very tough, but we don't give up at this point. They decide to go for the Water Pulse here, which is going to be great. But I should have went for a charge with Prior. 
but this is just going to be the aerial ace and so we can say goodbye to the opponent's manta and cause two body slams. Should be all it takes to knock them out. And as you can see, the next body slam is coming through, it's gonna take the knockout against the opponent and with this we can try to get some more damage in but it's still going to be tough because I have a ton of energy on the Obama Snow now. Can Mandibus still win this game for us? They go for the Icy Wind and they go down from a snarl. And next opponent. We're going to have the Lantern and Lead. This is going to be great because we have um, at least a resistance to Spark here. I want to see if they're going to go straight for the Charge Boom and I also kind of want to bait a potential Earthquake. So I decided to overfarm by a little bit, go up to the Earthquake and go for a Body Stamp then. We're most likely going to see a No Shield from the opponent at this point and exactly that's what's going to happen here. But we can go for another Body Stamp anyway which is going to knock them out as well. But they decided to use a shield and now I can try to catch a move which did not work out at all but I decided to use another shield. So they're very low, they're mostly going to swap out now exactly into the Vigoroth because they don't really want me to farm them down. But this is still going to be okay. We can go for a Body Stamp, get a ton of damage onto them and with this I should be able to just farm them down here and get a ton of energy on my Vigoroth for whatever wants to come back in after. Afterwards. And so, we have a body stamp stored. Let's see what's going to be in the back here because I doubt that they're going to go into the lantern at this point. Let's see. They are not. They're going to go into the weekly tough. And this is going to be a little bit of a tough one. But we are basically in a perfect alignment situation, which is going to be great because we can get a ton of damage onto them here with the charge moves, most likely forcing a shield. And with this, we can align ourselves. But I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Mandibus. Why did I do this? It seems so silly. Because they're gonna go into the Lantern anyway, and I can go for the full farm down, allowing me to go for a Body Slam. And so, while this might have been not the best option for the opponent here, or like for the matchup against the Weekly Tough, going into a Mandibus here definitely was the correct choice against the Weekly Tough, which is kind of funny. So, you can go for an Arrow Days, knock them out, and win the game just like this, which was a very interesting move at least, and we can move on to the next opponent. If they didn't swap, um, you can basically swap yourself after them going for one Icy Wind. I just didn't want to get the Icy Wind on the Donphin because Donphin was my most valuable Pokemon. So, I decided to swap out against the opponent's Skarmory. It's kind of safe to go for the Shield here because it's very likely a Brave Bird. It is going to be a Brave Bird. They're swapping out and they're going to swap out into a Dragonite. And I decided, yeah, I can just go for the Body Slam. That should be kind of fine. Should hopefully going to get the Shield from the opponent. It does not. They decide to let this move go through, allowing me to go for another Charge move here, which is going to be okay for me. And they let this move go through as well. So what do they have in the back? Do they go back? They're going to go ahead and go into a Quagsire. And this is going to be a little bit of a tough one because they over farm by quite a bit. Most likely thinking that this is going to be the best way for them to deal with the rest of my team. But they decided to swap out here just because Counter can be kind of decent for the end game but this might not be the smartest idea because stone edge is going to hurt quite a bit and they catch the move on the skarmory here which is going to be very tough for us as now we're still going to be trying to go for the dark pulse here which is going to work out but yeah i think they're forced to go for a charge move for sure now i think they cannot farm me down at all but it's still going to be a tough one. I'm letting this move go through. There's no reason for me to shield up anything here. And I might just want to try to sacrifice my Vigoroth at this point. They're forced to go straight forward because of bodies that would knock them out anyway. And so with all the energy that I can gain here, maybe my Donphin is going to be fine at knocking out the opponent's final Pokemon with the Cragsire. But does a Shadow Boosted Body Stem do enough damage here? It does. And so we can win this game. Final battle, actually interesting to see this player here, um, he lost to Hit Legend with Luxray in the Ultra League by the way, for, uh, showcases battles sometimes as well, like his team basically sometimes as well on my um, channel, so shouts to you, definitely very cool dude here, always brings something interesting. Here we're gonna see a Gaslord, which is going to be great for us because he's gonna do some nice damage against them and we can force another shield or the knockout against him here as well with another body stand that's coming through. The most are going to let this move go through, trying to spark me down with their lantern, but I can overfarm by quite a bit and just go for our body slam trying to see Petai with a potential surf which they are not gonna go for anyway so they know how to play this game but we can still get to another charge move which can be definitely very crucial for me. I'm going to still have to make a little bit of a play here and my play is to go again into a matchup that you don't really want to be against like an electric type going to the flying type instead of the ground type but I just want to get rid of the energy from the opponent. They can still of course go for another charge move but I feel like this was the only play that I can do to have a chance here of winning this game and this worked out beautifully as you're gonna get out the opponent's manta and we can do some nice damage here with our body slam Take a look at this it's going to do some very nice damage as we can go for another body slam here 
This is going to be great, getting the shield from them, and they go for a very early aerial ace, which I would not really agree with. I think they could have found me down here, but I'm not going to complain about it, as I can now try to reach a Dark Pulse. And here, I'm curious, is it better to go for a Dark Pulse, or is it better to go for two aerial aces? Honestly, in hindsight, I think it would have been better to go for two aerial aces, but... Um, here they make a great play going for the charge move at a time where um, I was still basically in my fast move animation as well. We can go for the dark pulse and actually it does kind of look like we can farm them down afterwards. And so Ariel is coming through against the land here and with this we can win the final battle of today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did feel free to leave a like and I'll see you then. Bye bye.